is within your home as it remains running throughout the day and night. Switching to an energy efficient refrigerator can lower your electricity bill by up to 40%. As an individual consumer, I cannot impact global fuel prices. However, I can ease the burden of rising fuel rates by switching to energy efficient appliances. What can you do? Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. With the details to the news for Friday, 16th September 2022, I am Abigail McIntyre. The government of Grenada has commenced preparations for the national budget for the fiscal year 2023, which will be presented in Parliament later this year. A series of sectoral consultations and public town hall meetings is being organized under the theme, Your Budget, Your Voice Matters. To encourage maximum participation, the Ministry of Finance is engaging stakeholder and sectoral groups and individuals at the parish and national levels. The consultations will provide an overview of Grenada's economic performance for 2022 and the strategic focus of the 2023 budget. It will also explain the budget preparation process and solicit views on specific sectoral issues and priorities that the 2023 budget should address. Parish consultations will begin on September 22nd in Karakou to be followed by St. George's at the GBSS on September 26th in St. Patrick's McDonald College on September 27th, on September 28th in St. David's at the Westerhall Secondary School and in St. Mark on September 29th at the Bonaire Government School. In October, consultations will be held in St. Andrew on 3rd October at the Grenville Secondary School and at St. John's Anglican the following day. The National Consolidated Consultations will bring the curtains down with a virtual engagement on October 5th, featuring presentations from various stakeholders on issues put forward for inclusion in the 2023 budget, followed by an open discussion. The sister isle of Pitti Martinique now has a 240 kilowatt generator. Due to the growing number of residents on the island, the previous unit was unable to meet the demand of all customers. This new 240 kilowatt engine will replace the 160 kilowatt Cummings engine that has served the island for years. On Tuesday, a planned outage took place on the sister isle to make way for better service. Grenlex manager in Caraquin, Pitti Martinique, Wallace Collins said the new unit is reliable and will provide better service to the people. Over the years, we've been having some challenge with the size, the size of the of the unit. It was a smaller unit, and as a result of the continuous growth on the island, it has become basically obsolete. And so, it is sometimes difficult to have the plant running um, with the smaller unit with the increased load. He said it was felt that it was important for us to invest in a, a bigger unit for the Pitimatic and so that certainly will improve on the re reliability of the plant in, in Pitimatic. I'm actually really impressed with the quality of work that the, the Pitimatic team has done here. I mean, it's not strange to us. I mean, they provide similar support to us in the Caracol um, plants. Plant supervisor at the Pitti Martinique branch, Stephen Logan, explained what was done to get the new generator up and running. From last week, Monday, we started by um, removing the old genset, which is the Cummins, and um, we did some fabrication of the exhaust system. We also fabricated a new shroud for the new engine. Um, we also reroute um, cables and so forth. The purpose of the change of the new engine is to um, build capacity um, because of the issues we have with the old gen set where we have to get it online, we have to um, isolate um, different villages. The plant supervisor thanked the customers for being patient during the installation process. I'd like to thank all the customers um, for being patient as um, the, due to the outage today. I mean, the, the outage is to, to better our, our capacity and the better you the customer. 
Two minutes of silence will be observed nationwide at the end of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's state funeral on Monday, September 19th, 2022. The two-minute silence is scheduled to take place at five minutes to noon in the United Kingdom and hence will be five minutes to 7 a.m. in Grenada. The tribute will give the Grenadian public a chance to pay their respects to the late monarch as citizens of one of Her Majesty's realms and members of the Commonwealth of Nations. The government of Grenada is working with the European Union and the Pan American Health Organization to address health care in relation to non-communicable diseases. The project is titled Enhancing Health Systems Resilience in Grenada to Mitigate the Impact of the COVID-19 Pandemic and Prepare for Future Health Emergencies. A foot care program was launched on Friday and a donation of equipment that will be donated to health centers was handed over to the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs. They include 10 foot care kits, 7 Doppler ultrasound machines and 50 tablets were provided. Other activities under the project which started in July include theoretical and practical training sessions, pharmaceutical supply chain management and others. The EU has given support to the program with half of a million dollars. Project officer at the EU to Barbados, Ms. Janine Blanchard, said the EU is happy to help fill the gap that the pandemic has presented in healthcare delivery. The food care program is one of four parts of the Enhancing Health System Resilience Program. And we understand that during the worst of the pandemic and before vaccines were available, that interruptions in routine health service delivery occurred. As we are now past the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are pleased that the health promotion at, beyond the pandemic continues with efforts to address issues at the community level with a renewed focus as there is less emphasis on prevention of spread of infection and a less acute response to the pandemic. The foot care program aims to ensure that the foot health related to chronic conditions such as hypertension and circulatory problems can be monitored in places where persons being served are comfortable. Ms. Fiona Anthony is PAHO's program specialist in Grenada. She said the organization is always delighted to assist the healthcare sector in Grenada. We are therefore pleased to collaborate with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs and the European Union on this most relevant training as the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs seeks to address anecdotal reports of rising prevalence of secondary complications of chronic diseases in patients with reduced utilization of the healthcare services during COVID-19. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, Ms. Naomi Jeremiah, said through training and other initiatives, health teams across the Tri-Island State will be strengthened. Today I'm indeed happy and pledge I extend my congratulations to a job well done by the Ministry of Health for making this initiative here a grand success. I would like to urge the population to note that the Ministry of Health mandate for this new 2023 era 22-25 is revitalizing, energizing the primary health teams and community involvement. So this other fair foot care program will be part of the education that will be going around, empowering the community, empowering people, and letting everybody be involved in such knowledge so that we can have a healthy Grenada where we can put amputation out of the state of our tri-island. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do tin stuff, garbage bag, first aid kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair, prepare for hurricane. Welcome back. 
It's being described as a bigger plan for smaller contractors and builders in the construction industry. Prime Minister Honorable Dickon Mitchell wants to see smaller contractors forming themselves into associations and cooperatives to increase their chances of bidding for bigger projects on the island. To get them started, Prime Minister Mitchell used the open house event on Tuesday at the Low Income Housing Project in Corinth as an opportunity to start creating a data base of skilled persons in the industry. This will ensure that government has a contact list of persons they can call when the need arises. The Grenadian leader also wants to provide the training needed to improve their skills. One of the things I hear some of the bigger contractors talking about is not having sufficient skilled persons. So if we are able to have a list of all the contractors here, the senior ones, the mid-range ones, the young ones, then it's an opportunity for us to look for trading opportunities for, for you. It's an opportunity for us to shape policy. And I'll give an example. For the large hotel projects that are taking place, I'm sure you're aware that we are importing hundreds of skilled and semi-skilled laborers. And there's high rates of unemployment in Grenada. So there's no policy in place right now that says that for every five imported laborers, you need to match and train five Grenadians. But if I don't have the names of trainees or the names of helpers, I can't go and argue and shout for people that I don't know. I don't know how to contact. I can't say to someone, well, I have 10 trainees in St. David's or 10 helpers. I want them to go from being helpers to being skilled carpenters or skilled tilers or skilled finishers. And these are the names, these are the contact numbers, and be able to call them and say to whoever developer that's coming in that for every 10 person from Dominican Republic or wherever you're bringing them from, Spain or wherever, there has to be 10 Grenadians, and these are the 10 Grenadians. And we need to understand that as a country, if we don't have data about ourselves, if we can't find each other, if we can't reach each other when the need arises, then the development will pass us by, and then we'll be arguing and complaining about people coming from wherever, wherever, and they're taking everything. PM Mitchell says by pooling together as partners, small contractors would be able to land the big projects. But he insists they must see the value in coming together. The days are sitting in the back of the church, Sitting in the back of the hall, always standing up in the back, and I notice we have a lot of that here. If all you want this country to move forward, you all need to step forward and move forward. So I can't jump up and down and fight for you all. And when I turn around, it's me alone in front fighting. Right? So you can't general and you army. So I'm saying for the contractors in particular, and I'm making this point because it's not just about house repairs. There are all kinds of companies that come into Grenada and get major infrastructural work. And for the life of me, I don't understand why Grenadian contractors don't pull more together, don't form construction cooperatives, don't form, uh, form joint venture construction companies and bid for and get the big government projects. This government is open to Grenadian contractors, but I can only say so much. If you all don't want to organize, put all yourself together and come and bid and get the big projects, don't blame this Mitchell. Another area being looked at by the government is changing the minimum wage to ensure workers receive the appropriate pay for their labor. Plans are in train to build a music lab in Karakou for use by students on the island. It's a project of the Division of Culture aimed at taking the music sector in Karakou and Piti Martinique to another level. If this becomes a reality, it will be the third music lab established in schools. The first was at McDonald College in St. Patrick and the second at the St. Andrew Anglican Secondary School in St. Andrew. Acting Chief Cultural Officer Adrian Mark says the lab would be multifaceted. Among others, students will learn how to produce music. Within the lab, we have a music studio. So, it's not a music studio. No, if you understand what is a lab. No, outside of the music studio, we have place inside that lab where we could teach not only music production, but we're able to teach drums, we're able to teach guitar, to teach um, keyboard, we should be able to do any process instrument, you know, so it's not, don't, people, we have that idea that the music lab is uh, a music studio, but not a studio. Within the music lab, there's a studio. But the program that we'll be teaching 
we're concentrating on totally in that lab will be music production for now. But the lab will entail everything else. That's a lab. When you come into a lab, you should be able to learn to play a keyboard. You should be able to learn to play a guitar. You should be able to learn to produce music. Mr. Mark is part of a visiting team from the Division of Culture, which includes permanent secretary with responsibility for youth, sports and culture, Norman Gilbert. It is led by Minister the Honorable Ron Redhead. Minister for Caraquin, Petey Martinique Affairs and Local Government, the Honorable Tevin Andrews, is pleased that the Sister Owls are receiving their fair share of the pie as it relates to development projects in culture. Whatever is taking place on mainland, should equally take place. So I'm happy to know that it has already started. That there are music schools in Greer, she has a music school in Karaku. And of course, well, we are here to have a discussion in terms of uh, possible venue. Uh, I know that one of the visions that I have uh, is to help transform that little section, that section over there by the community center into, into a nice cultural uh, building. We want to do that way. Training will be conducted to ensure tutors hired to work at the lab would be up to world-class standards. And that story brings us to the end of the National Report for today, Friday, 16th September 2022. Recapping the top story, Grenada government begins preparations for presentation of 2023 budget. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for viewing and do have a safe and enjoyable weekend.